What's up everyone? My name is Henry. I am one of the co-owners here at Brada Custom Woodworks and we're so excited to have you joining us today. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen a couple posts where we show 3D renderings of projects that we're working on. And from those posts, a couple of our awesome followers have actually reached out to us asking questions about our design process. So we figured, what the heck, let's do a tutorial on it. So we're super excited to start a two-part tutorial on SketchUp and how we use it specifically for woodworking. In this video, we're going to be going over some of our commonly used tools, and in the next video, we're going to go over kind of more specific tips and tricks. That way you can become more proficient in the program. Now, there are some paid versions of SketchUp. However, everything we'll be going over today is on the completely free version of SketchUp. And with all that being said, let's go on and get started. All right, to begin, we'll go over real quick on how to get to SketchUp. You'll start by going to app.sketchup.com. And this will bring you directly to the sign in page. If you already have an account, go ahead and sign in. If not, you can just create one real quick. Super easy to do. Now, once it loads, maybe it'll bring you to the home page. Here we go. Here you'll find all the projects that you've worked on on this specific device. Now, if you've worked on a project on another device under your account, you can find those under Trimble Connect, SketchUp, and you'll find all of those projects right here. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna go back to the home page. If you wanna follow along, you can go and select this drop down menu by Create New, and select the measurements you wanna use. Now when you start a new model, this will be the first thing you see. You got your axes here, you got red and green for your X and Y, and you got blue for your Z. You also see this guy just got hanging out. He is there just purely for height reference. Now Google has named this guy Ty, but we are going to change that to Kyler. Just a little shout out to the guy who wrote the awesome music here in the background of our video. Now real quick before we begin building anything, I just want to go over how to move around the model. Now I highly recommend using a mouse. This program is so much easier to use with one. So. Once you grab a mouse, you can follow along. <laughs> so first, you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. You can also push that in and move the mouse around to orbit. And you can also press H, which will pull up the hand pan tool. And you can click and drag and move yourself around the model. Now with that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create just a very basic and simple cabinet, just to go over kind of the common use tools, how to move objects around and create groups. So we'll start off with going over here to the rectangle option. We'll select that top one. And this has a preset hotkey of R in case you want to use those. We'll zoom in a little bit here. I'm just gonna go and left click and I'm gonna drag out from here and you can see where the rectangle would be if I left clicked again to place it. Now, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see a dialog box and you can actually see the dimensions of that temporary rectangle there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna create one that is exactly three feet wide and two feet deep. Now, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and without clicking anywhere, I'm just gonna type in two feet. Oh, sorry. My brain will work three feet comma space two feet and you'll see that i'll actually show up in the dimensions box on the bottom right there and once i press enter a rectangle will appear that is exactly three feet wide and two feet deep now we can check that just by going over here to the tape measure tool select tape measure also has a hotkey of t as you can see in the parentheses and you'll see it'll snap to that corner there now I'm going to left click on that corner, wherever I drag, you can see again on that bottom right box, you can see the length of the line. So I can see that this line is two feet and this line is three feet. Nice and simple. Good way of checking things. I'm just going to press escape to get out of that. Now I want this to be a three quarter inch sheet of plywood. So I want this to have some depth to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the push and pull option. Select that first one, which has a hot key of P. Now I'm gonna come over here and just click anywhere in this, this kind of space. And you'll see when I move my mouse up and down, it'll follow it. Now again, I'm just gonna put in, so I want three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna put 0.75 the inch marker you'll see again that'll pop up in the bottom right of the screen 
and I'm going to press enter. Now we have a perfectly three quarter inch piece of board here. Now I'm going to come over here to the selector tool. The way I like to build my models is I build it one board at a time. That way I can go back and I can easily create a cut list and see what materials I need. Now, if you look at this, this is currently in a whole bunch of different pieces. You got your edge pieces, you got the, the corners, and each face is a different piece. Now, I want this to be one solid piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag to cover that whole piece. I'm going to right click and select make group. So what that does is when I click anywhere on it, it'll select the entire object. Also makes it a lot easier to move the piece later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this piece to create the rest or most of the rest of the cabinet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that and press Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And you'll notice when I start moving my mouse, this guy appears, an exact replica of the original piece. I'm going to go and plop that guy there. Now when you paste an object, it'll automatically put you onto the move icon or the move tool, um, which can be found over here as well. You just select that and then this top guy with the hotkey of M. Now when I hover over this guy that I have selected still, you'll notice these little red crosses that show up here. Now I'll do it on each side that I hover over. Now these can be very handy as when you're in the move tool you can just select one of those guys with the left click and you can rotate the whole object and again on the bottom right you can see the dimensions the angle whatever you're working on now i want this to be exactly 90 degrees so i'm going to enter in 90 press enter and there we have it so what i'm going to do is since this guy is selected i can use that move tool click that bottom left corner come over here and it will snap right to that corner there. That's exactly where I want that. Now, if you remember, this guy is currently three feet tall. Now, this is just going to be kind of the top of a kind of side table, nightstand type of thing. So I just want this to be one foot tall. So again, we'll use this push-pull tool. I just want to show you real quick that when things are grouped together, you can't just go ahead and use the tool like this on it. What you have to do is you go back to the selector tool or hotkey of spacebar, and you'll double click on that grouping. And that will then allow you to edit it. So I'm gonna select that face there. I'm gonna go down. I want it to go down two feet so that that piece is one foot tall. Now to get out of the editor of the groups, you just go to the selector tool and select outside of that group. I'm just gonna double check here and press T for tape measure and just make sure, yep, that's exactly one height, that's perfect. Escape to get out of that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna once again copy and paste this guy here. Actually, you know what, first I'm gonna do this guy and put one on the other side. So again, move tool, select that bottom right corner, and pop it right at the end there. All right, so I'm gonna select this guy, do a good old copy and paste. I'm gonna take this corner, pop it right there. And again, to extend this end, I have to press, press paste to get the selector tool, double click that, P for push pull. Now I'm gonna take this, click on it, drag it out. And what I can do is I can just make it flush with this face. So I can just click on that face and it'll snap right to it. So here we got just a nice simple box. That was pretty straightforward, right? Not too complicated, pretty easy. Now I'm gonna make a little drawer for inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the line tool, which is right here. Select the pencil, hotkey of L. I'm just gonna kind of left click there, left click there, and here here and then complete the object there now this is not part of any group it's just its own thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate over here click and drag right along here so that way I'm just completely highlighting this section I'm gonna make another group here so 
select him, press M for move. I'm gonna bring that out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna bring it out exactly one foot. And you know what, let's bring out another two. Get some distance there. And this guy also want three quarter inch. So I'm gonna do P for push pull. Pull that back 0.75 inches. Now I'm just gonna real quick, just make a very rudimentary drawer here. Might even do a little hyperlapse along this part. All right, Oop. sorry about that, Kyler. Zooming away on you. All right, so I got this little drawer and I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fit nice and snug inside of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these groups. So these are all individual groups here. Now I can either click and drag and select all of them or what you can do is you can also use the selector tool. Again, hotkey or spacebar to pull that up and I can select that. Now what you can do is hold down shift and that'll allow you to select, also deselect other objects. I'm gonna right click, make group, and I'm gonna actually make those multiple groups into one big group here. So what I wanna check and see is, I'm just gonna kinda go halfway back here and just double check that I'm inside of that other box. Looks good. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do Control Z to undo that move now that I know it fits. And then what I wanna do is kinda of have this little dip down here that goes, that gets cut out. And that'll kinda of be the handle of the cabinet. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, there's honestly probably a better way of doing this, but this is how I do it. <laughs> Again, I'm no pro at this program, I just use it a lot. Select L as a hotkey for line tool. Now I'm gonna go along this line until it snaps to the middle of that board. There we go, midpoint and group. You know what I didn't do? I didn't double click on that box to edit it first. So we're gonna find the middle of this group. Come down an inch. Go out two inches on each side. There we go. Now an alternative to that circle is we're gonna go off to the arc mode. And I'm gonna do it just a standard arc. And again, I'm gonna use that kind of guide that SketchUp does. Select there, come down and select the second point. And then you can see here, this arch just kind of follows along the pencil. And we're gonna snap it right along the edge there, AKA a quarter circle, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Select the center of the arc, select the first point and the second point there. I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy and press delete to end, uh, delete him. Now I'm gonna select P for the push pull, push pull tool. <laughs> Too many P's. And then that's right, you know what? So just a quick lesson. This group is made up of multiple groups. So you have to double click to get in that group. And you gotta double click to get into that group. So here we go. No, I'm not gonna delete the old uh, cutout that I put in there. I'm gonna actually just use it as a guide because you can still lock onto those points even though it's not in this specific group. So I'm gonna put a line here. Gonna create the arches, maybe. There we go. Got quarter circle. Got a quarter circle. Now let's try that push pull again. Hey, there we go. Third time's a charm. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna bring it all the way out to this edge. And that'll actually get rid of that entire little, little uh, cut out there. Now these lines, I never like the way they look with these lines, um, but you don't wanna delete them as they, if you delete it, it'll do this. It'll get rid of that entire section. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that. What you can do is you can select it, right click on that line and hide it. I just think, thinks, I, <laughs> I just think it gives it just a little bit of a cleaner look, especially when you're sending a rendering to a client. 
it just makes it look a little nicer. All right, so we have a little drawer done. And what I can do is, I just kind of want to make it look like it's a little open. So I'm going to plop it right about there. You know, just give it a little, you know, 3D look to it. So there's just kind of a, a quick review on a lot of the, the very basic tools that we use. Um, nothing fancy. I mean, we do use like the 3D text pretty frequently. Uh, we use it a lot for labeling certain parts for the renderings we send to clients. Obviously, that one is a little larger than I want, which we'll use another tool from the move menu there for that. We're going to do the scale. Let's bring that guy down a little bit to proper size. I'm going to press M for move. I'm just kind of move him right up there to the middle. So that can be good for labeling different parts for clients, making it a clear image. Obviously, this you wouldn't really need to label, but... There you have it, that's a drawer, just in case you didn't know. Um, a lot of the shape options are under here as well. You got your couple of line options. I have never in my life used a freehand option because there is no precision to it. Now another option, or another tool, sorry, that we use quite frequently is the paint bucket. Now we typically use this to kind of um, label different boards. It is actually kind of useful for when you create a cut list. Um, so if you have two boards that are the same size, I typically just mark them the same color. So that way when I go in, create a cut list, it just makes it nice and simple. And this is also very useful for when you send renderings to the clients. If you wanna make it look nice and pretty, uh, you can go over to the search bar here, come down and there are some wood sections here. So if you wanna add some, uh, you know, would look to it, you can go ahead and do that right here just by clicking on the different uh, groups. Um, other than that, most of these tools we really don't use all that often. Uh, again, for just rendering, sometimes I will add the dimensions, which you just click at the two points, go up and click to put that right there. So I'm gonna delete this hideous puddle looking thing. Um, but other than that, we really don't use the other tools that often. Um, erase, I feel like it's just kind of pointless because you can just select an item and press delete. Uh, again, control Z is undo, control Y is redo. Um, that's pretty common across most programs. But that is a pretty quick just review of the tools we use most often. Hey everyone, this is Garrett, and we want to thank you so much for joining us here on this brief little tutorial of the tools and how to use them on Google SketchUp. This is the first video of our Google SketchUp for Woodworkers tutorial series, so please subscribe and be looking out for our next video, which will be focusing more on the toolbar on the right side of the screen. It is over here where we get to explore things like the 3D warehouse and scene creations. If you have any questions, tips for us, or even if you just want to talk about the first thing you designed on Google SketchUp, please leave those in the comments down below because we would love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys, and we will see you next time.